I'm Jim Small, editor of Arizona News Service, and I'll serve as the, a moderator for this forum. All of the candidates who are participating in this event have been provided the questions they will be asked in advance. However, I may ask follow-up questions the candidates have not been provided in order to get a better understanding of where they stand on the issues. The candidates will have 90 seconds to answer each of the questions asked. Now, let's get started. Legislative District 6 covers portions of Coconino, Gila, Navajo, and Yavapai counties, including the communities of Cottonwood, Sedona, portions of Flagstaff, and many of the communities along the Mugion Rim. The two Senate candidates for District 6 are the incumbent, Republican Sylvia Allen, and Democratic candidate Nikki Bagley. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Senator Allen, I think, for the first question okay. here. Uh, when the school year started this year, there were more than 2,000 classrooms without a permanent qualified teacher. The Learning Policy Institute recently named Arizona as the least attractive state for hiring teachers, largely due to working conditions and compensation. What policies do you support to address this issue and enable public schools to hire, retain, and support teachers? Thank you, Jim, and, and also I want to thank, uh, thank you and those who invited us to come here today. This is exciting to talk about education in Arizona. There are so many positive things to talk about, but one issue we have that is serious is our teacher shortage. And so I do want to address that, especially this session. I've been telling education groups that this should be our number one issue. In fact, the teacher problem is nationwide. It isn't just here in Arizona. We're having concerns in this country about how to keep teachers and to help teachers. One of the bills I carried this last session was to make it simpler for teachers in other states to be able to come and teach in our state without spending a lot of money and, and having to go through more education. That they could come, If they're certified, they can just come right to our state, and I know that might help. I'm also going to be carrying legislation that that will uh, help pay student loans for uh, teachers that will stay and teach in Arizona. And also, we have such a shortage in our science, physics teachers, special ed teachers, and we need to have uh, solutions and ideas to help uh, encourage them to go into that field, and paying student loans is one way that we can do that. So I'm going to be carrying that legislation. Uh, I have a daughter that is a teacher. Our teachers uh, also, I believe, suffer with a lot of uh, morale uh, issues. I mean, we put a huge burden on t-shirts. We expect them to be uh, social engineers and uh, to take on numerous problems that are, that are in our communities and, and with our children. And uh, I know that they want to be able to go in the classroom and, ha and teach and have the love of teaching. And so we need to find ways to encourage our superintendents to deal with these issues too, to find out what it is that can make these teachers, give them uh, more support in their training, whatever we can do to keep them. But it is an issue we need to work on. Great. Thank you. Uh, Nikki, what about you? What kind of policies would you support for this? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, teachers have been shown to be one of the most influential factors in student success. So it has to be a priority for our state to look at this issue. Uh, I believe it's not a supply issue. Uh, you know, if you look at the Department of Ed and all of the teachers that are certified, I believe we have enough teachers in Arizona to fill the supply, but, uh, you know, we need to look at teacher support, and that doesn't include just pay, although it is a big piece of it. I, my sister-in-law is a teacher. I've talked to dozens of teachers, uh, you know, while campaigning, and that is consistently a concern for them. Uh, so pay is important, but we have to, to focus on supporting teachers with other means, you know, uh, programs that can help them give their students the best education, but also the tools. You know, the soft capital funding is really in a crisis state right now, and making sure teachers have the, the correct tools to implement you know, th their highest quality education is very critical. Okay, great. So next question, Nikki, I'll go to you first uh, for, for the first 90 second answer. Governor Ducey has said that Proposition 123 was the first step in addressing shortfalls in the K-12 system. What are your ideas for those next steps and what role would you play in building and sustaining the K-12 system? Absolutely. Uh, this has to be a first step. Um, we are still probably $1,000 per pupil short of education funding compared to where it was pre-recession. And so the work cannot be over. Uh, Prop 123 was a good step forward for funding, uh, but it only restored 18% of what has been cut. 
And so we need to look at, at, at not only the next step, but also what's the next long-term step. What I see in addressing our almost constant education crises is that we have built in fiscal cliffs into many of our education funding sources. And I'd like to see dedicated funding in our general fund um, and dedicated funding for education so that we're not you know, facing our voters um, on a constant basis um, to, meet, to meet educational funding needs. Okay. Uh, Senator Allen, uh, what about you? What do, you, what do you see as the next steps uh, after 123? Well, first, Prop 123 was a huge major, major step, and I, I was very excited to be part of that. Uh, to be able to, we desperately needed more money for education, and that did put more money there, and we were able to do it without raising taxes. And, and I want to point out that we didn't get one Democrat on the floor to help us to get that bill on the ballot. And, and uh, that's disturbing to me. We also added another $250 million this year to education above what Prop 123 will bring in. However, what we've got to concentrate on and be sure that we help is the, the pie. I don't want us to keep dividing up the pie right now. 50% of our general budget fund is going to education. We've got to grow that pie. And as the economy grows and we can stabilize it, yes, we will find more ways that we can sustain improving our education. And one idea, and I know you're going to talk about it later, is Prop 301. I'm very excited about the opportunities we have there of having a dedicated fund to increase the compensation to our teachers. Okay. Um, well, uh, we'll get to the Prop 301 hopefully in a little bit here. But, yeah. uh, so tell me one thing that the state should do to ensure that public schools are held accountable. Well, um, I carried the bill this year for the new, uh, from A to F grading uh, uh, program. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm excited about that. I really, uh, because I want our schools to be graded on more than just a test, because we have exciting stories to tell about our schools. I'm really uh, encouraged when I go into the schools and see the po positive things they're doing. So now parents can see that the school is also making progress in their AP classes, getting kids ready for college. They can see that the school is doing wonderful things for CTE classes. And uh, so a high school graduate graduation dropout, what kind of programs are schools using that are helping that situation. So this is going to be a great improvement to help hold our schools accountable. And I want to also, at the same time, be able to get out to the public the positive things the schools are doing and, and the taxpayers knowing how much we appreciate that $10 billion they have given to us for education by them being able to positively see that their dollars are working in some, way, some areas. And yes, we need improvement. And, but. We have a good story to tell in Arizona. All right, great. Uh, Nikki, what about you? What, what one thing would you do to, to ensure accountability for public schools? Well, I agree with Senator Allen in that we have to get beyond a, a single test uh, in, in, in looking at uh, the achievements of our schools. Uh, but as far as accountability goes, one thing that I see is that district public schools are held to a very high level of accountability and reporting. And I, I see that there are some of our public schools, namely charter schools, who are not held to the same standards. And so, you know, while we have some of the very best public charter schools in the country, in Arizona, uh, I believe that we could do more to make sure that our tax dollars are being spent wisely. Uh, as mayor of Jerome, I balance the budget every year. Uh, fiscal responsibility is really, really important to me. And I see that that's one area that we could do more to make sure that our tax dollars are being leveraged uh, for quality education in the state. Okay. Uh, if you support more funding for education, and I think from your comments earlier, it sounds like you do, how do you propose paying for it? Absolutely. Well, I think uh, the business community is has been very, very invested in seeing additional funding for schools. And I think really the next step starts with coming back to that community and continuing to develop solutions that can bring long-term funding uh, for our schools. Okay. Uh, Senator Allen? I if you support uh, more funding for schools, how would you pay Well, for? of course. Uh, we're going to have to always have this challenge. I mean, my grandchildren, I have 19 grandchildren, so of course we have a challenge in how we continue to fund our education and provide the programs 
that we need for these children. And it goes back to what I said again about uh, how important it was. We were able to get our, uh, after the $3 billion deficit, to get our budget structurally balanced. And I believe that's why we had such a, a good year this year and being able to have extra money to be able to put back into, uh, the, like pay back the universities, that $200 million that we did. Those are things I hope we can continue to do. And I think we will as we balance the whole pie because we're also very concerned about other issues in the state as you know mm -hmm. so uh, again I go back to I think we can find other solutions like we did with one two three let's keep thinking outside of the box let's look at different solutions I do have one follow-up if you don't mind sure yeah and I'll give you a little bit of chance to respond to it sure sure so um, as far as funding solutions go one thing that I talk to people a lot uh, as a state we've cut taxes um, 24 out of the last 26 years but what I, I'm going to make sure we do as at the state level is not continue to put the tax burden for the hard costs associated with education onto rural districts who can least afford it. So I've seen uh, so many school districts go towards raising taxes on properties uh, in order to cover the the deficit that the state is not covering. Yeah, Senator. Well, we certainly need to reform the way we budget education in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I've been saying that for eight years now that we need to reform it. But, uh, and definitely rural schools do struggle uh, to, they don't have as much property that they can tax because of the areas where they live. We try to equalize that out across the state, but they still have unique challenges and that is true. But uh, the, the taxes, a lot of that is locally where people, uh, the districts have the ability to bond and they ask their tax pay payers to bond and most of the times they're willing to do that, sometimes they aren't. But certainly reform is something I'm more than willing to look at. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Proposition 301 earlier, yes. which, which brings in annually about $550 million through a sales tax set to expire in 2021. Do you support updating or renewing Proposition 301? Oh, definitely. In fact, I'm wanting to see if we can get it on the ballot in 2018. Um, I think we need to come out very strong that we want to keep this tax, that it's important to sustain it. Uh, it does bring, it has brought a lot of money. Uh, that we can't afford to lose. However, I believe that we should get together, collaborate, compromise maybe even, and let's take a real good look at it. I'm interested within that uh, tax to see if we can't do some funding for special education. That's a whole other issue that we could spend hours talking about. And uh, But teachers' pay is number one to me. And, and if we're going to open that up and look at it, I think the first reason we do that is see how can it be this funding source to help us with uh, compensating our teachers and bringing up we're number 28th in the country in the average teacher pay. I'd love to bring that up. Okay, uh, Nikki, Proposition 301. Yeah, absolutely support its renewal. Um, it's really critical. If we're going to make progress, we need to have that base funding uh, from what I understand, uh, this proposition puts about over 500 million into our school systems, and so that's something that's uh, got a fiscal cliff uh, ahead of us if we're not able to renew that. I would hate to see the state making the decisions for how to cover that that hole in that funding source. Um, you know, it, just a few years after that expires, Prop 123 funding expires. And so those two things combined, uh, you're looking at close to $750 million of education funding impact. So we have to be building on the solutions that we already have, but keep both of those in place. Yeah. Now, Nikki, earlier you mentioned uh, the, the tax cuts. And, and since 19, the mid-1990s, the state has consistently cut taxes, uh, and, and tax cuts that were passed uh, since 1999 uh, will we'll reduce general fund collections by about $900 million each year once they're fully phased in, uh, according to what budget analysts say. The governor, the governor and others have advocated for completely eliminating the income tax, uh, which brings in about 40 percent of the state's general fund revenues. How would you balance tax policy and education funding if you're elected? Right. Well, I think we need to take a major look at our tax code. Uh, I think something that hasn't been done is a strong fiscal analysis of where our tax cuts and incentives are paying off. Uh, some of these programs are really working hard for us. They're generating revenue. We want to keep those. Uh, but the ones that aren't performing so well, that are, are costing dollars from coming into our general fund, I think it's time to take a look at where we can uh, where we can make adjustments. And so that's a really important piece. Um, again, of being fiscally responsible and, and being a good steward of public dollars. Um, but, you know, additionally, 
when I went through the school system, we were 26th in the nation for school funding. And uh, these tax cuts coupled with the recession has landed us in, in 48th position. And that's after you adjust for cost of living. Um, and so it's an issue that's really important to me because I was able to grow up in Arizona, get a quality education, uh, get a job in my field, and I was able to pay off my school loans. Uh, I know that opportunity window is shrinking for the generations to come, so it's really important to me. I think it's been a strategy that's worked in Arizona before to invest in education in order to pull out of an economic recession. You know, in the 80s, we saw a little economic downturn, and it was that investment in education that really helped lay the groundwork for us crawling out of that and being successful, and I'd like to see that be our same strategy today. Okay. Uh, Senator Allen, what about the balance between tax policy and education funding? Well, yes, we. Uh, I really think it was a positive thing. I'm a kind of a Milton Friedman junkie person, and to allow people to keep more of their money, I don't see it that the state lost that money. In fact, I see it that nine million, nine hundred million dollars is being allowed to stay within the economy to keep businesses solvent. To, how would we know since this was during the recession when we were losing so many business? My husband and I lost our small business during the recession, and how do we know how many more businesses we would have lost if we hadn't relieved some of that burden on them? Yet I believe leaving that money in the economy fuels it and helps it to come swinging back to us, and it has helped us where we are today. It has created more jobs. Ford Magazine has said we're number two now with job creation. It has proved to help Arizona get back on her feet for, from the recession. So I believe that, it, that, but you know, here I am advocating that we keep Prop 301. Yeah. I think it's a matter of looking at things uh, and, and weighing them. But of course, the overall picture is important for us to look at, and I think it was a wise step for us to do. I think it's proving to be positive. And I think at the same time, we are starting now. Next year, our revenues will be back where they were in 2008, I believe. So we are slowly getting there, and, and that's a positive. But I think it's from making good, sound uh, budget decisions, not overspending. If we would have rushed out into our economy and taken $3 billion out of the economy, it would have been, I think, a very negative hit, and we would have lost some more jobs during that time. Okay. Uh, I've got one quick question, just kind of a quick lightning round, yeah, quick yes or no here. Uh, the corporate private tax, private school tax credits automatically increase by 20% each year, regardless of student growth, inflation, or other factors. Do you think that that's good public policy? I'll go Senator Allen. Yes, first. and actually that 20% is a ceiling. And some years we don't reach that, and some years we have. Okay. But that allows underprivileged uh, neighborhoods and, and families to be able to choose where they, and it helps these kids. And that is tax dollars that we're going to have that we have to spend, and so we would have to spend educating them anyway. Okay, Nikki. Uh, no, I don't approve of that. I don't think it's good fiscal policy, and I don't think it's good public policy. Uh, you know, this is an area where we see very little accountability, and it's also, it, uh, you know, it's an area that. Um, that I think needs to be tightened down a little bit. You know, it's it's very clearly taking money out of our general fund, and I'd like to see uh, the legislature be able to make those decisions. Okay, well, I think that's about where we're going to have to end it. Thank you very much, ladies, for Thank coming you. down today. Thank you.